Um, <laughs> hey there. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Yosh. I, I usually don't talk with like a giant echo, so don't, don't be afraid. I'm, I'm just a normal human being. Um, <laughs> the thundering voice of me. Um, my name is Yosh, uh, and today I will be talking about a thing called Browserify. Um, yep. So I am a human who makes a bunch of NPM packages, um, who's actually, I've lived in Amsterdam for four years, so I guess I'm local. I'm, I'm a local speaker. I think there's like one more local speaker and that's like us, so yay. <laughs> I'm from here. Um, you might know me from a little framework called Chu, which is a front-end thing. It's a little train, that's the logo. Um, I tweet a bunch. Yeah, I've been in doing Node for like a couple of years now. Um, yeah, so today's about Browserify. Um, Browserify? Why Browserify? Yes, Browserify. <laughs> um, I'll be uh, I'll be going over some some just intro stuff like oh, what's Browserify? Like go over the internals, um, ecosystem, some other stuffs. Um, but um, yeah, this this Browserify thing is. Um, it's, it's important to, to know what, what is Browserify. There, there, I feel like there's a bit of a misconception there. Uh, ooh, is this less, this is less echo, is it? Yes, great. <laughs> um, oh, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> eh. So um, the way I, I view Browserify is um, the same way I view ls or like cd. It's just a Unix command uh, used to compile JavaScript. It's pretty stable. It, it takes JavaScript in. It does some stuff to it. It like combines it, and then like out comes JavaScript. And well, that's it. It's it's a low level level tool. Um, and you know, like, why would I be talking about this? Because we will forever be compiling our code. It's, I feel this is my my personal opinion. It's a bit of a pipe dream to be like, we will stop compiling our code. Um, you probably want to be doing gzip. You probably want to be doing minification. You probably want to be doing, like, at, at the very least, those things. And probably, like, compatibility or whatever. If you look at other languages, they're still compiling. So saying, we will stop compiling our JavaScript is probably not going to happen. And if we're going to be compiling our JavaScript, we probably want to be using um, some sort of low-level tool we can build other tools on top. So that's what this talk is about. How do you wield this compiler toolchain um, and shape it to like create the, the perfect thing you want it to do? Which you will learn today, sort of, hopefully. Whoa. <laughs> this is called Node Interactive. I don't think it was supposed to interact with like all the. <laughs> um, yay. So. Um, <laughs> Back to the talk. Uh, Browserify is a modular um, modular tool, which means it's composed out of a bunch of modules that together create a bigger pipeline, a bigger tool chain. Um, you can create your own Browserify easily, pretty much. Um, it uses uh, extensions uh, through transforms and plugins. There's a mild distinction there. Uh, generally, you're using transforms to transform your code from one state to another state. Uh, or, you know, yeah. Um, and it's, it's pretty stable. Browserify is now version 8. I believe they take breaking changes super seriously. If, like, an error message changes, they, like, uh, create, like, a major version along those lines. Uh, you can pretty much re always rely on Browserify unless you make me patch a thing and then Browserify breaks, which I did once a year ago. <laughs> don't, don't make me red patches, but everyone else, you know, it's, it's stable. Um, yeah, this is pretty much how it works. I was saying it's a Unix tool. You say uh, browserify your uh, intro, like your index.js, and you just pipe it out. Instead of like standard out, you just pipe it to a file, and there, you've just compiled JavaScript. Hooray. Um, <laughs> I could demo this. I assume people would like already sort of understand this. I'll show demos later. Uh, yeah, if you're doing it in JavaScript, it looks like this. I really like that the if statements are like in blue. Um, highlighting's going a bit wrong, but that's fine. Um, so what you say is you import Browserify uh, as a thing. You say Browserify this file, 
never do it like this, but you know, for demo purposes. Uh, then you say bundle the thing and the result of the bundle, which is a node stream, uh, you stream to process.standard out or uh, fs.create write, write stream or your HTTP server to create like a live HTTP uh, piping thing, which, which is very viable to do. Um, it's, yeah, it's like five lines of code. If you compare this to this, it's, it's all like stream based, node streams, shell streams. But, um, yeah, this is basically the, the basics. And if you want to like add transforms, um, you add the dot transform and names in it, and then you like have your whole pipeline. That's the basics of Browserify. Yay. Not very deep yet. Uh, oh, demo. Sure. Uh, so, how do we do this? We say Browserify uh, 01 vanilla.js, and then, ta da, this is like how many lines? Whoa, whoa. Uh, lines, we just compiled 564 lines of JavaScript in less than a second. I don't even know how long it is. Uh, yay. Browserify, whoa. This one, this one, this one, yeah, here. Um, okay, cool. So internally, uh, Browserify uses streams pretty much everywhere. Um, for those of you who don't know node streams, uh, they are this thing uh, for asynchronous I.O. Uh, then instead of like doing a state machine where you say, hey, I'm ready to receive data, hey, I'm not ready to receive data, uh, send data from here to there if state is this, uh, you, you create a little, um, you combine all these things, you inherit like constructors and stuff to create a nice flow of data with back pressure and you use the dot pipe to like do all that stuff and propagate errors and whatnot. Um, so in, internally, Browserify leverages this uh, to hook in transforms, which are also streams, which um, transform code at their own pace and all these transforms together, they like transform code at their own pace and it becomes this very efficient machinery of, of piping out code which is low in memory usage and reasonably fast. Um, it takes in a, a, it creates an AST. It um, then starts pumping out that AST throughout like all the transforms. It's like, here's chunks, here's chunks, here's chunks. And then internally you're like, cool, I'm just gonna get this code. I'm gonna apply transforms. I'm gonna walk the AST using uh, something like falafel. Um, the AST is created using uh, Esprima, no, Acorn nowadays. Uh, Packages, packages. Um, you walk the AST, and, and AST stands for ab, uh, abstract syntax tree, which is basically a way of saying a giant nested thing of objects, like all the way down, and everything has like words on it that says what it is. Like this is the start of an if statement. This is the end of an if statement. They got like all these words. I always forget them. Um, yeah. So you apply local transforms first, which are streams. Uh, so they apply on individual files. And then over the whole combination of that thing, um, you apply global transforms. Global transforms apply to dependencies also. So say you were to import ES6 stuff, like const, you want to change all the const in your whole code base to var, uh, you would create a global transform that applies over your whole code base and takes all the const statements and replaces them with vars, uh, which you could probably write in like 10 or 20 lines or something. Um, which I'm not going to do, yay, but you could. Um, and the thing already exists. Uh, but register require calls. Oh, yeah. Um, so plugins are the other thing. I, I mentioned it uh, initially. You got your transforms, which are to transform code, and your plugins, which are rarely mentioned. They're like sort of secretly tucked into like the readme because um, Substack, the person that created Browserify, uh, kind of like doesn't want people to use plugins. They're kind of like abusing the thing, but you get to do like really cool stuff with it um, because it takes Browserify itself as input because Browserify is just a bunch of like uh, pipes, just a bunch of like streams. Um, a plugin like hooks into like between one of those steps. It's like a giant array of streams that eventually like get smushed together. You get to say, uh, before we like label every thing in the AST, we want to run a transform. Or like at the very end of the bundle, we like want to do a thing. And, and you, you get to do that, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, internally code would look sort of like this. I, I took this from one of my, uh, my repos called uh, Extract CSS, 
which after a certain step, um, before the final output bundle, what it does is it takes all the, um, there's this one package that writes CSS to like a head element. We would take all of those, uh, smush them together and output a separate file and remove all the statements. Um, that's what this code is taken from. But what you say is in the pipe, yeah, it's readable. In the, <laughs> in, the, in the pipeline, you get the label statement. You say, select this thing. And before that, um, add the extract stream, which takes out all those things. And then the next step is applied after that. There's like eight, eight steps you can hook into. Um, yeah, which is not a lot of work, but all of this is, goes like very undocumented um, for good reasons. But it, it allows stuff like, um, for example, Watchify, which is a, um, it does partial builds, which is great for both CPU, uh, because it um, doesn't use a lot of CPU, doesn't do the full rebuild all the time, and it's extremely fast because it doesn't do the whole thing anytime, every time. Um, but it, it needs to hook into this thing so it can inject like new data, it watches the file system and it injects new data into like the stream and like the rest of the thing just continues. I hope that statement made sense. <laughs> It hooks into this thing, <laughs> and that's where, where plugins are useful for. Um, yep, internally, I explained this already. Ecosystem, yay, this is where I get to tell you, like, hey, this is the stuff you probably should be using. Um, there's uh, a lot of stuff you could be using for Browserify. Um, there's like, I don't know, 200 modules? Does, I think I got internet. Let's see if, if inter live internet. That's like live demos, but <laughs> scary. There's like a lot of plugins. Um, this is like half the list. I believe this list hasn't been updated in like months. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to optimize your, your code, if you've got like a bunch of client side code and you're like, hmm, I want to optimize my code, um, probably Uglify is what you want to be using because it, um, it just uglifies your code. What is it called? Minifies it, removes that code. Simply, um, there's bundle collapser, which replaces long uh, file names with tiny ones. Um, there's this stuff called what was it? Not Acorn, the tree shaking thing. Rollup, which uh, does a bunch of optimizations. You can get like half the optimizations Rollup does with some of these. Uh, sort of. It's a bit of a eh statement. Um, actually, regarding Rollup, you probably don't need that. People might be wondering, like, hey, but you know, I've, I've heard, we're talking about optimizations. I've heard like Rollup optimizes a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, someone recently wrote a blog post about it, like, hey, if you've got a thousand modules in your like, front end system, then you know, Rollup might have a boot time that's 0 0.5 seconds faster. And it's like, yeah, that's fair. But if you've got like a thousand files, a thousand modules in your front end system, you probably have bigger problems than a 0 0.5 second delay in your startup time. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't think that is worth it. Like these are the low hanging fruit, and if you ever like want to optimize beyond it, there's probably options. Um, but so yeah, bundle collapser uh, collapses a bunch of names. Uncertify removes all assert statements. Um, NASA has this coding guidelines, <laughs> which is kind of funny. They're like every function you ever write in C should have like three asserts at least. Um, and I was like, lol, that's funny. I'm going to do that with my code. So I'm doing that with my code. Have been doing that for years now. And it actually, it's pretty nice. Um, some people like TypeScript. I literally just write out my types. I'm like, assert that equal type of this thing should equal this thing. Here's a custom error message. And you know, it just works. And no need to compile unless you optimize it. And then you like strip out all the asserts and, you know, JavaScript for me is almost like statically typed. <laughs> also got RSI. I don't know if those two are related. I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, you, you can do that. Um, and e Exorcist is the last optimization you can make. Uh, you can create uh, source maps uh, with the dash dash debug flag in Browserify. And then Exorcist takes those source maps and exercises them into a separate file. They're like, no, be gone. Here, separate file. Um, so that's, that's useful if you like serve those two. Uh, cool things. Uh, Sheetify, which uh, Hugh, my, my friend Hugh and I wrote, uh, which is CSS in JavaScript. So you can just be re almost, almost like require this CSS file and then it's in there. You say uh, const Sheetify, then Sheetify, tachyons, and poof, you got tachyons in your project, which is amazing. 
uh, BRFS, which is, uh, um, which is the file system, the browser file system. I kind of like that word. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's file system, but for Browserify, because you can't read files from the browser. What this thing does is it reads files ahead of time and then includes the stringified content into like your bundle. So you're like, I want to have an SVG in my thing. It just like compile time, it reads out the SVG, inlines it, and there you have an SVG in your bundle. And if you like want to optimize it from there, uh, you could like treat it, like import the SVG, uh, and then optimize, export it and optimize it, which is the way we do CSS, uh, which is si similar to like how Webpack does it, sort of, at least an idea. Um, there's bulkify, which is bulk imports. You're like, I've got 15 models in my slash models directory, and we all import them the same way, and it's a lot of boilerplate, and we always forget to import stuff. Bulkify, just like does, here's a bulk of imports, cool. Um, Watchify for like the reloading stuff. CSS extract to extract CSS from your browser JavaScript bundle into like a separate CSS file. I'll come back to like this one and Tachyon's, or sorry, Sheetify later. Um, then there's like wrappers around, uh, Browserify, because so, so far I've been like mentioning like, here's a bunch of tools, here's how you do plugins, here's how you do transforms, like look at all these things, you can co combine them together and it might, it might sound like a bit of an effort, uh, and it is. So people have like built wrappers around all of this, so you can be like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, use a wrapper and not worry about all this stuff, and hey, now it's a very nice dev experience. Uh, Budo is probably the one you want to be using, the other two are a bit older, though they're still good. Um, Optimizing, oh yeah, Bundleify is the same as Budo, but for like production builds, it applies like seven different optimizations to your code, so you don't have to, uh, which is nice. Uh, and there's Bankai, which does all its stuff, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show Bankai? Is that the only, no, I'm gonna show him more than that. Cool. <laughs> for the demo part, <laughs> I present. Um, how am I doing with time? I think I'm all right with time. Uh, so if we do budo01 uh, vanilla.js, uh, let's show vanilla.js actually. Is this vanilla? Yes, yeah, this is vanilla. So in vanilla.js, what we're doing is we're saying uh, import HTML, uh, import, yeah, import bell, and then we make a tag template string, which is just HTML, so we could like render that, and we say append this, these elements uh, to the DOM. It's like your hello world, right? And in line, we just put a little style tag which says, make it a big font so y'all can see it. Uh, well, that's a fun sound. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and out pops this thing, yay. Um, if I do budo, whoop, dash dash live, dash dash live, and we got like a live reload running. Uh, yeah, so this doesn't do anything. Whoa, whoa, where'd my thing go? Does this even work? Oh, it's a different thing, I think. Is it? Oh my god. Do we have errors? So dash dash live is supposed to like give you live reloading on this thing, uh, but somehow it's not working. Great. Uh, anyway, it's not Budo that I wanted to show off. Um, there's um, 02, which is css.js. So this is just, um, we got style tag in here, which is, says 200 pixels, and you're like, eh, that's not ideal. Uh, so there's also this one, which uses Sheetify, which inlines a bunch of CSS into like your, do I need to like up the, yeah. It inlines, uh, it creates, you, you just say, hey, here's, a, here's just real CSS. This is real CSS. Look, it kind of looks like real CSS. Um, <laughs> um, and you, it, gives you a, um, a class back, a prefix, it's a unique, sorry, it's a unique prefix, and you just append that to somewhere in your HTML, and then all of these things get like compiled together, and then uh, if you run this, uh, which we are already running this, hello humans, oh God, why is it not working? This is the worst, no, is it? No, wait, 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 wait. That's right, Budo was having hiccups because they've patched it recently, and that is not great. Uh, Bankai, Bankai, Bankai start entry, this one. So I wrote a different version from Budo. I used to maintain Budo. I no longer maintain Budo. Um, because I've got different opinions. I was like, you know, um, 
building stuff, like having a live reload server is cool. Uh, but I write my HTTP service by hand. I use streams. I kind of like want to aim for the 40K request a second thing. So I like need to buffer everything. I probably want to use a CDN, I, like do all these optimizations. And, and I, I like building my own stuff. So I build out Bunkai as a, a server library first, as an alternative to Budo. Um, so you can just create your own, own server. And then two weeks ago, someone came along and was like, here's a command line tool. And now we have a command line tool for Bunkai, uh, which has a start and a build command. This is the start command. Uh, I think it live reloads. I'm not quite sure. If we say hello, you, does it reload? Hey, it works. See, you just get to like update this. Uh, probably have like other stuff soon. Um, but the coolest thing about uh, Bunkai is you get to say build, uh, which is Bunkai build whatever file it is. I know dash dash enter and dash dash there is too much typing. We need to change that to a nicer interface. But uh, you say this command. And if you look in dist, which we just created, the little directory there, you get your bundle.css, bundle.js, and index.html. And you get to pass an optimized flag. So all that stuff I was talking about, like optimizations, extracting of source maps, minification, doing all that stuff, um, is built into this one tool. Uh, Brito has doesn't have like a build step. Um, I believe Webpack does. Um, yeah. Uh, where was it going with this? Oh yeah, if you're like doing Browserify and you like want to use it in production, this might be a useful thing to like start, try, be like, ah, oh, how can I like, compile a website? Um, small commands, and it's built on top of like the modular Browserify core. I think a lot of people are like starting to build on top of that, and we're like creating a nice little little ecosystem of higher level tooling, like it should be. Um, yep, that's Bankai, and that's my talk. <laughs> Thank you very much.